Hello friends, and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we're going to be featuring a Gigantamax Grimmsnarl team, a very fun team. I've been doing a bit of work around it uh, the last couple of weeks, trying to get it to work, um, but... Hopefully this is the, the, the article, the finished article that we're going to have. Anyway, the team consists of the Gigantic Max Grimmsnarl. We've got the Hitmon Top, the Arcanine, Rotom Wash, Ferrothorn, and Sylveon. So it's all based, like I say, around the Gigantic Max Grimmsnarl. Basically, we're utilizing its ability pickup uh, to proc a weakness policy um, between either the Hitmon Top with its Bullet Punch or the Sylveon with its uh, Quick Attack. Um, so when you do that, we can also pass an item over. So if it's Sylveon, we can pass the, the Bibberry Berry that we've got on there or the Life Orb from Hitmon on top. So you get a weakness policy boost with a Life Orb, which makes Grimmsnarl extremely powerful. We've got our first opponent, so let's see what we can do. Um, okay, right. Well, we've got Togedemaru, uh, Primarina, Excadrill, Incineroar, Dragapult, and Gothitelle. Grimmsnarl doesn't look too bad here, honestly. I mean, the Primarina can give us a few issues, as well as the Excadrill. Um, I'm more worried about the Primarina Togedemaru lead uh, more than anything else. Uh, just because the, the Togedemaru can fake out a hit on top and potentially stop our Bullet Punch into our Grimmsnarl. Um, but the thing is, not many people expect... Gigantamax Grimmsnarl. So you would kind of think, well, if we're going to fake out anything, probably going to fake out the Grimmsnarl, right? So we might get away with it that way. So we'll we'll start off. We'll go with our, our lead there. What else do we need? Hmm. Hmm. What else are we going to bring? Um, Sylvia be good here. Uh, huh. I think Ferrothorn will be decent. And maybe Rotom. Um... Yeah, we'll go Rot. We'll go Rotom Wash. Because <laughs> we've got the Dark Pulse, the nasty plot on there. And as always, my friends, if you stick around till the end of the episode, there will be the rental team of, of this team for you guys to try out yourselves and have a bit of fun on the ladder. Because it is a lot of fun. I've had a few games with it this morning already. And uh, yeah, when you get it working, it works perfectly. And the big selling point is you can one shot a Gigantamax Lapras with Power Whip from this Gigantamax Grim Snow. So we'll see if we can do the same to this <clears throat> from Arena. <gasps> it's competitive Gothitelle. At least we're not tracked, so. <laughs> competitive Gothitelle. My God. All right, well, we're going to go for it. We're going to Gigantamax, go for the uh, Max Overgrow, and we're going to go for the cheeky old bullet punch because we should outspeed the primarina that's the thing um we've just put enough speed investment in grim snarl to uh to get the jump on the majority of kind of these middle middling tier speed tier pokemon does that make sense it does in my head anyway so we'll get into it uh, if anything Jag oh dynamax is on the opposite side of the field at least we know we're gonna be faster because we're going first, so that's a nice indicator to start with. Just worry about the Gothitelle maybe faking out our hit on top. But are they going to do that? Hopefully not. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> this works out so good. <laughs> oh, come on. Could I ask for a better start to this episode? So there's a weakness policy boost. And then the pickpocket will activate straight after. This is beautiful. And then we steal the life orb. And, you know, like, weakness policy alone, it's not strong enough, right? But if you add on a little bit of a life orb on top of that... There you go! <laughs> Get rid of it, just like that. Except the Grassy Terrain will recover a little bit of that uh, life orb chip damage as well, which is super nice. And we're sitting in a pretty nice position right now. You know, Hitmon Top isn't trapped in by the Gothitelle. We know we can knock that thing out the next turn. Um... We'll see what my opponent brings in. They've still got their Dynamax in the bag, so we need to be a little bit careful for that. <clears throat> Hopefully this is a nice, nice, just clean one for us to kick off with. That would be good. Um, okay, so Togunamaru coming in. I would imagine we'll probably see a Nuzzle here. Um, we'll go for the Max Snooze. And do we want to keep topping? 
probably get psychicked. Well, no, we won't. We, well, we potentially could if, if Grimmsnarl gets nuzzled here. Um, because we could potentially just stay in close combat the Togunamaru. Might not be a bad shout because we can potentially take it down with Sash. Yeah, that. I mean, that makes sense. And like, we probably lose top here. Oh, that's way better. Okay, I didn't expect top to actually outspeed the the Gothitelle. If you're going competitive, you kind of want to go a bit faster, maybe. But I don't mind that at all. So there's the psychic. It's like plus two, so we're not going to be taking that. No, no, no. But we do get the G Max snooze off. It's not going to have its secondary effect because we just pick up the knockout. It only works on the actual Pokemon that you're targeting, so it doesn't actually work on uh, the partnering Pokemon, the yawn kind of effect. And surprisingly, it's like a 50% chance. Normally I'm KO on things, but stuff that does survive, I am. Um, I've not actually had it activate once, which is kind of interesting, so... Here we get Ferret in. Know what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Drag. Drag of course. Okay. Um, well... Let's just go for the G-Max Snooze again, and... I guess we probably want to get rid of Togunamaru, so we can body press that slot. I guess we need to worry about if the Dragapult has, like, Flamethrower or something like that. It could take down the Ferrothorn, but... Grimmsnarl's pretty safe right now. Um, be interesting to see what the Dragapult goes for. <sighs> Max Phantasm, maybe, maybe. Just to get the defense drop, I guess, would be useful. Talking tomorrow because, okay, there's a the Max Flare. Because we do have to worry about um, potentially. Uh, Iron Head as well, coming in from the Togunamaru. You know, it's still gonna do some decent damage. We should we should take it. Let's just zing zap him. And yeah, we don't get fully paralyzed. That could have been a little bit of a crux in our plan for sure, but <laughs> Bye bye, Dragon Bolt! And it's fine, it's all good now. Um yeah, we're gonna be able to wrap this one up pretty easy. You've got Rotom sitting in the back to come in and um, Rotom's going to be able to, to deal with Togunamaru pretty easily. And Grimstone's not in the worst position, you know. I think if the Togunamaru had Iron Head, it probably would have used it that last turn. So it's a little indicator that it may not have Iron Head. Zing Zap, Nuzzle, Fake Out. Spiky Shield? Potentially. I don't know. Um, I mean... We'll just go for Spirit Break and we'll just go Dark Pulse. There's no need to set up or anything like that. And the battle was cancelled. G Max Grim Snarl. We get our first win. Okay. It's not the easiest Pokemon to build a team around for sure. Um, and I kind of, I didn't want to just build a generic team just like G Max Grim Snarl without any flair or any style points. And I hopefully this kind of ticks all the boxes for all the style points. Um, and I hope you're enjoying it so far. Like I say, it's a very fun team and it's a nice way to utilize maybe one of the underlooked abilities on, on uh, Grim Snob. Okay, so we've got our next opponent of the episode and they are playing a team of Gastrodon, Mudsdale, Conkledur, the Incineroar, Grim Snob, and Ferrothorn. So it looks like super hard trick room without a trick room setter. Uh, so I'd say they're heavily reliant on, I guess, the kind of decent synergy the team's got between itself and the typing, and then speed control from the Grim Snarl for sure. Uh, with T Wave, it's got to be the only thing that they're able to do. I guess the swagger combination between Grim, Grim Snarl and Mudsdale is a thing, but I mean, we could probably nuke the Mudsdale if it does come out. I'm going to go with that same kind of tried and tested lead. The, the lead of the team, uh, the Hitmontop Grimmsnarl. It's about what we want in the back to deal with everything else after that. Um, Ferrothorn. Uh, okay, well, I think we got Ferrothorn here. Um, 
Although we do struggle a little bit. Like, huh. Are we better just actually not bring in Ferrothorn and bring in maybe Sylvian? We can deal with the the Gastrodon, the Conqueror, and the, the Grim Snow pretty well. Um And I'm sure we have Mystical Mystical Fire as well, which we can yeah. Which we can kind of deal with a Ferrothorn. No! We didn't lock it! It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. We've got we've got Rotom and and uh and Arcanine. Which can still do a job. Would have liked the Sylvian, I think. Okay. <laughs> Talk way too much. And then time just runs away from me. It's always the same. I'm sure we'll be fine. Whatever whatever happens here. Um okay. The intimidate's not ideal. Uh me in cinema. One of the things I was thinking about in the team was Melotic, just to kind of really put off these intimidators from from uh, cycling in and out onto a grim snow so much but um yeah we'll max starfall and we'll go for the the bullet punch into the grim snow but imagine the incineral field like hmm there is fake out everywhere like on my opponents like fake out both both ends you know the incineral Probably doesn't feel like it wants to go for a fake out. I'd see maybe a parting shot there. Um, Grimstone might go for screens or Thunder Wave. Could even go for a Swagger, you know, into... Into the Incineroar slot and switch the Incineroar hard switch it out to uh, Mudsdale. That would make a lot of sense. Okay, we're going to see the Ferrothorn hit the field, which is fine. There's a weakness policy, G Max Snooze will still it'll still pick up the KO onto the Ferrothorn. Um the one worrying thing though is that uh the Ferrothorn could max and stock on for those. Nasty nasty. Oh wow. Okay, is this another G Max Grimmsnarl? No way. No way. Probably we're faster. It is! Okay. <laughs> head to head. Whose Grim Snarl is better than the other? I guess it'll come down to who's is faster, really. Um, but we might be able to take an attack from them. We get the bullet punch off. We proc our weakness policy. If we're faster, hopefully we are. And we'll steal. Pickpocket to activate. Steal a life orb. Perfect. And we're faster. And we'll see. Good night to the opposing Grim Snarl. So that's dealt with pretty nicely. Okay. And we get the, the terrain up to prevent any sort of status shenanigans going forward. Uh, we know that the the, the, uh, the Ferrothorn can't max now, which is really good for us. We have to be careful of it, of course, because of the iron defense. Uh, Incineral, no. Hmm, Gastrodon. What do I worry about more? I mean, we could just could close combat the Ferrothorn and get it the next turn. Go for max overgrowth here. Hmm, Gyroballs. Gyroballs a bit worrying. I think like that. I do worry about that a little bit. Um, hmm. I think we want to get rid of the Gastrodon because. It's going to be the one thing that is a little bit more difficult for like Arcanine and Rotom to deal with. So if we can just deal with that now, get it out of the way, I think the end of this match becomes a bit easier uh, to close down. We see the Protect on the Ferrothorn. Um, probably fearing the double up there from the, the close combat and whatever we throw out from Grimmsnarl. We do see a Rindo Berry, but I don't think this makes any difference. Too strong! Um, and then the Incineroar to come back in. And we've got one more turn of our Gigantamax. We are back down to just neutral now with the, the additional Intimidate. Um, but the thing is, right now, it doesn't really matter too much what my opponent does. If we can take down the Incineroar this next turn, then it does mean that uh, Arcanine's pretty free to just deal with the Ferrothorn. So, yeah. 
Okay, so that kind of gets rid of our weakness policy boost. The double intimidate there. I think if, as my pawn, maybe would have been better bringing in uh, the incineral a little bit earlier. Uh, we'll go for the max starfall into that slot and yeah, we'll just double up into the incineral. Ferrothorn's likely to get an attack off, but I don't think it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, it's a fake out. And I think, just with the life orb alone, this may be enough to get the incineral. No, not quite. Okay. What's the Ferrothorn going to do? Iron defense, gyrable. Gyrable would make sense. Oh, an iron head. Okay. But we do just about take that. Wow, crit. Okay. Dynamax turns finished. But I mean, we're going to be able to get rid of the incineral now. Spirit break. And go for the close combat into the Ferrothorn. And like I say, even though we timed out, we got our leads at the top. It's fine. So that worked out. Um, and we just kind of had to adjust our game plan a little bit with the Arcanine and the Rotom in the back rather than Sylvian and maybe Arcanine. <clears throat> Spirit break enough. We'll probably lose Grimmsnarl here, but I mean, it's picked up three KOs, so we can't really complain. It's done pretty well. Clock combat minus two, not going to be doing that much damage. <laughs> but, en but enough, but enough. Uh, we just need the Arcanine in and we can clean this one up. But yeah, Ferrothorn, like I went for a special Arcanine um, just because of the, the kind of recent spike in Ferrothorn usage and you're seeing a lot of the Ferrothorn at the minute use in Iron Defense just to bolster those defenses. So if you're physical Arcanine and you can't get it in quick enough, it makes taking Ferrothorn down very difficult with something like Flare Blitz. So I kind of just wanted to not really entertain that and uh, the the flamethrower kind of made a bit more sense on this team anyway for something like Ferrothorn that could be otherwise a little bit more problematic. Uh, we'll go for the flamethrower and uh, just another close combat and that should be game, set and match. And then we can do this rental cord for you guys. My opponent thinking about... Ooh, going for the cheeky protect. Okay, well... Just detecting what we've got. They might have an Ockerberry, you never know. They may do. You never know what they've got. No, of course. If we paid more attention the previous turn, we would have seen that they just had leftovers. But, I mean, scouting out what we've got move wise makes sense. Although it's kind of inevitable now, there's not really a lot you can do. There's a flamethrower. We'll come out and pick up. Should be a knockout. There we go. So, a nice clean win. Grimmsnarl got three of the knockouts. Arcanine coming in just to clutch this one out. But good game to Dabby. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So, like I said, what we'll do, we'll hop over to the rental code right now. Okay, friends, we're going to create this rental team for you all to try out. And here it is. So, I hope you have a lot of fun with it if you do try it out. Remember, there are two mods to the team with the leads in particular. I think if you're facing down against something like Durant, the Sylvian Grimmsnarl is quite a nice lead there. You do have, obviously, the ability to intimidate. Um, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that. We just want to check it. We want to check. Uh, the ability to intimidate with the Hitmon top lead, but uh, being able to proc the weakness policy on the Grimmsnarl, uh, pass it over the, the Biberi Berry with the um, the, pick, the pickpocket ability, just means that you take the, the Steel Spikes from Durant, and then you can KO it in return with like the, the G-Max Snooze, which is a really nice play, and kind of removing Durant um, from your opponent's side before it can actually get any knockouts is a huge thing. And if you lose Sylveon in the process there, then, you know, it's not bad. You're still sitting with a pretty good full health Grimmsnarl, hopefully, depending on the partner of the, the Durant, obviously. Uh, you've got to be a little bit careful around things like follow me, but I think we've got enough in the team to kind of, um, you know, you've got other options. You've got the Rotom, you've got the Arcanine uh, that help against stuff like um, Togekiss. And Arcanine generally is good against most redirection Pokemon just to disrupt. You've got the Safeguard there to help out against sleep and things that are a bit of a pain uh, to deal with. And you also have the um, the G-Max 
uh, move, very move to get the, the terrain up with uh, Grimmsnarl to get around status and things like that. So, hope you enjoy the team. If you do try it out, let me know, of course. If you've enjoyed the episode, as always, do drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content, and uh, we'll leave it there. I'll see you all for another one very soon. So, until then, my friends, take care, and bye-bye.